Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are checking out Magic of Voxel. Now, if you're a regular to this channel, you know we've checked this out a number of times in the past, and there's a good reason for that. I am a big fan of this program. It's probably the most popular voxel editor out there, and on top of that, it is completely free. And the reason why we're looking at it today is because there were just new releases of uh, Magic of Voxel, specifically 0.99.4 and 0.99.4.1. And we're going to look at some of the new functionality in those new particular releases. Releases. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, this is a completely free program. So I highly recommend if you haven't already to check it out to go ahead and download it for yourself. It's available on all major platforms and again, completely free. Now, I've done a couple of videos in the past showing you how to use uh, Magic of Voxel. I'm not going to get into that in any great detail here, but here you can see a simple kind of scene that was created using Magic of Voxel. This is from the linked um, resources section. It's from Kluchik. Uh, but it gives you an idea of the kind of scenes that voxels are capable of. And voxel is basically just a 3D pixel. It's a pixel with depths or a volumetric pixel is what voxel stands for. And now let's take a look at what is new in 0.99.4. Again, if you want more of a hands-on guide, I will link some videos with all the other links down below. So here we go. Um, in this particular release, it's heavily focused on the new renderer functionality. So we're going to spend most of our time in the render, but there is new features here. Uh, for example, color, all color options now have their own color picker, which supports HSV, RGB, H block, and hex values. Um, now we're going to head on over to the renderer and see that's where the majority of the new functionality in this release is. So to get to the renderer, we head on over here to render. And you see it's going to start rendering straight away. Um, and this is under the default setting. So there's a bunch of new things that have been added in here. If we go to sky section right here, you will see um, there are now options here. We can bring in a sky map or an HDR map. And these are available. I've done some links in the past on where you can download HDR maps. But this is basically an environment in the background. It ships with a couple of sample maps to get you started. So example, if you want to have a parking lot be doing the lighting here, you just load in that new map and you'll see it has a pretty profound uh, result on the overall rendering quality. And here, let's switch out to a different map and you will see, let's click here and we'll go to a river road. You'll see there is the overall and you'll see the immediate change in the lighting in your scene. So um, there is some processing requirements involved, but if you want to have a quick lighting from basically a 360 degree HDR map, uh, it's very easily done now. Now there's some couple other things that have been added here as well. If you go into um, media, so that is, where is that one? Here, I believe. Um, you can now come in here and enable TR shadow right here. And this changes the lighting model. You can see it, the progress across the top here. TR shadows will cause translucent shadow, which allows light passing through glass and cloud voxels. Only glass attenuation uh, can affect the light color. So if you don't have any glass in your scene, that is not going to do a whole lot. Now, the other one that's pretty big here is the um, cloud. So uh, media material, which supports multiple scattering inside of volume. That is this guy right here. And again, it is going to change out the lighting model. You're going to see it's adapting across the top here, like so. And give it some time. And you're seeing you're getting a completely different render as a result. We've also now got uh, MIS GGX, which is available right here. So we're going to turn that one on. And what that is is multiple important sampling or GGX surfaces, uh, for GGX surfaces, sorry, metal, plastic, glass, for better reflections. Now, all of these things do, of course, have a bit of a price attached. So uh, expect it to slow down the results. So again, when I move or change the scene here, the lighting result is going to have a bit of a hit involved. Uh, especially this MIS cloud, which enables um, multiple direct lights, but it is very expensive. So that is really going to slow things down. If I switch this guy uh, to the off setting, you'll see we're, we're flying now um, compared to before. Whereas if I turn that guy back on, we're going to get a better image result, but it is going to take longer for it to actually process. Um, and that's kind of it. We've got a couple of other features in this particular release. Let's bring them all up. We'll take a look at it in time. So in the 0.99.4.1 release, we've got, again, the new ability to use HDR format panoramas, uh, fog, uh, sampling to reduce noise, supports fog and orthogonal view and bounding volumes. Uh, we saw different media options, the color changes, palette menu, right click. Oh, I didn't illustrate that. So if you click here now, there is a right click menu available in the palette. Uh, let's go back. Oops, wrong one. Uh, we got 
Uh, the render improvements, the cloud, GIS, uh, MIS, GGX, and TRO shadow or translucent shadowing that we, we kind of looked at all those quickly. Uh, can it just bounce a few specular scatter uh, paths separately now? Uh, can assign glass cloud materials to sphere cylinder shape voxels for experiment only? The render pipeline has been refactored, uh, which needs more time to improve, optimize, and fix bugs. So that's kind of a plumbing underneath the uh, underneath the surface kind of thing and frame drops and noises are to be expected. Now noise when they're talking rendering is, well, that's noise. Uh, and if at the end of your render, you still have this in here, well, expect that because that is part of the new uh, redesign of the render pipeline. So anyways, that is it. This again is, let's just close that one down. So here we're gonna see a different example of the kind of stuff you can do with Magic of Voxel a voxel based modeler and renderer and it is it is a very cool project you can also do some animations in here and you can export out your vox format files for use in just about any kind of game engine so if this is the art style you are going for uh, this is definitely a project i do recommend that you check out and now that we've got again these new uh, features for example these uh, hdr maps you have a lot more power capability in the rendering and you can get much cooler results so anyways, that is Magic of Voxel 0 0.99.4 and 0.4, excuse me, 0 0.41. Uh, again, heavily focused on the renderer side, uh, but you can get some really pretty results directly out of here now. Uh, let me know what you think of Magic of Voxel in general and these improvements. Do you render in Magic of Voxel now? Because I suppose if you don't, uh, outside of the right-click support here and the color selector, it's not a whole lot new here. Uh, but if you do render in Magic of Voxel, there is a ton of new nice functionality in here. So let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.